Welcome on in. It's time for another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Mike Fenner. I'm Ashley Kaiser. We've got a full plate of high school football in week six highlights by a big region six rivalry. Let's kick it off. Here's the battle for Erie as prep takes on McDowell. 5,000 fans showed up tonight for the big game at Gus Anderson Field. We'll start here in the beginning. Cathedral prep with this opening kick. And it goes to Stephen Porter as he sees the open field and takes off. He goes for 92 yards into the end zone for the Trojans. McDowell starts things off with a bang, getting off to a good start. It's six to nothing, wow. McDowell. Incredible play to start things off. I was taken by surprise. And we'll move still into the first quarter, as, but we've got preps. Starting it off here, Luke Costello finds R.J. Roberts Jr. with the pass is complete, a 41-yard touchdown to tie the game. It's now 7-7. Seven seven. A lot of prep fans flooded into Gus Anderson Field, making themselves at home. Second quarter, McDowell quarterback Blaze Myers hits Jake Hauer. 22-yard touchdown pass for the Trojans. It's now 14-7. They lead over Cathedral Prep with 9-16 left in the second quarter. What an atmosphere there. Yeah, right before the break here, a 23-yard field goal from Alex Sontheimer. 20-7, Trojans at the half. Now from the 20 as we head into the second half, Blaze Meyer hands it off to Dominic Baraducci. Hollinsworth there makes the stop just short of the end zone. Then a fourth down that leads to it. McDowell Sontheimer goes for the kick, gets it from the far five yard line. And then this next one, fourth quarter, same score. Prep goes for the four yard run. Sutton's Lewis, 23 to 13, McDowell. But that's all the Ramblers would get as the Trojans go on to win it 23 to 13. I don't know if you ever expect that. Uh, Coach Frank drew up a nice uh, kick return that we hadn't run that this year, and those guys executed, and he, he took it to the house. Well, at that point, when they were out of timeouts, it was just a matter of putting the ball on the ground and shortening the game. And, you know, they needed two possessions to be able to, um, you know, to be able to get the lead or go up. So at that point, we were just putting the ball on the ground. Well, they beat us last year bad, so I just had to take off this time. I just had to take off. Running the ball. And um, Blaze IQ, he was just, our line was doing good, and we just kept playing hard. That was crazy. It brought everybody's energy up. The stadium was going crazy. I couldn't hear, even hear anything. It was, it was awesome. We just controlled the game, no turnovers. Uh, we were very uh, smart with what we were doing throughout the whole game, and uh, it worked out pretty well. And on the Plyler Entry System scoreboard, McDowell tops Cathedral Prep with that final score again, 23-13. to 13. All right, what a game there tonight. Region 5 action will hit a few games here, including Harbor Creek hosting General McLean. As we get to the early action, scoreless until Lance Brown gets the rock, goes in for 6. 6-0 six lead for the Huskies on the touchdown run in the red zone there on the right side. Ensuing drive coming for General McLean. This pass into the flat. Complete and ruled a fumble, recovered by the defense. Dawson Kalicki and the Huskies take over. Harbor Creek later cashing in. It'll be a Tyshawn Jones run on the right side as he finds Paydirt. And he'll score, make it a two-score lead for Harbor Creek early on. Brown would score again before the half, leading it 20 to nothing now with the Huskies. It was 20 to seven at the break. McLean would score again in the second half. Harbor Creek hangs on for a 20 to 14 win over General McLean. Now we got Fort LaBeouf home for Gerard at Carm Bonito Field. Bison's QB cor corner Connor McChesney with the strike to Carson Pepe. He spins out of the tackle there, picks up additional yardage, gets the first down. McChesney again with another strike down the sideline, this time to Hunter Villa. And that'll be another first down. The drive would stall Belos here with a 37-yard field goal. It's three to nothing Bison into the second quarter. The Jackets still down three to nothing. Carson Stevens finds James Kibbe for the first down pickup. Just a few plays later it leads to this. Stevens as he gets flushed out of the pocket finding Kibbe for a touchdown. Slow start for the home team, but Fort LaBeouf goes on to beat Gerard 43-14. to They really picked it up in the second half there. To Sheen Field we go and Corey, how about you take this one away, Ashley? Yeah, that's right. Over to the Beavers here. Starting off on the second half, Corey trailing 14 to 7. Nolan Carey passes high for his receivers, gets picked off by Jake Harkness, and he'll return it to the sideline red zone for Fairview. Now Tigers would pay it off from the two with the quarterback Vinny Campoli. Powers his way through the end zone, extending the Tigers lead 21 to 7. Beavers next possession. We have Carey with the quarterback draw 
run up the middle for 14 yards. Just a few plays later, first and goal from the eight. Carey calls his own number again, gets it in untouched to the cut, leading them 21 to 13. Fairview top scorey, 31 to 13 is your final score. Let's go to Rogers Field, Union City out in Albion tonight visiting Northwestern. And for the Wildcats, quarterback Lloyd Fountain decides to take it himself here. Extends the play, rolls out to the right, and he's going to find the end zone. 13-7 lead for the Wildcats on that touchdown run. And later on in this one, Union City with the football, Owen Kearns with a short dive up the middle and stretches across the goal line for a touchdown. Ties at 13 with eight minutes to go. That was Cole Mikovich on the first Northwestern touchdown. Pardon us. Northwestern gets its first win of the season under Coach Bill Henwood, a final of 19-13 over Union City. Let's go to Lawrence Park, John L. Post Stadium. Seneca visiting Iroquois tonight. Jack Corey against Manny Johnson in this matchup. 6-0 Braves in the second. Seneca's Joe Brennan taking down Christian Kreeshack in the backfield. Bobcats now with the football. It'll be Isaiah Cadden with the short run as he takes this one up the gut. Keeps the drive going, same drive. Seneca with the football here, finding the end zone, and Nolan Seabury slant pass to Dominic Buscemi, hits the end zone there. No good on the extra point. Bobcats tying up 6-6. Iroquois trying to put together a drive before the half. Kreshak will find Micah Pizarski for a first down pickup, but in this one, it's a final score, 18-6, as it is, pardon me, it is Seneca, I'm sorry, 18-6, Bobcats get the win. Ignore that score down below. It is Seneca getting the win over Iroquois tonight. Let's go to Crawford County rivalry between Cambridge Springs and Sager Town. For the Blue Devils, it's going to be Brett Kania who gets the pitch for a short touchdown run as he gets flipped into the end zone. 13-0 Cambridge Springs on the score. Later, it'll be Kania again with the carry. Gets the touchdown to make it 19-0 as Cambridge Springs will go on to beat Sager Town in Crawford County. A 45 to nothing final. Other high school football scores from around the area. Northeast on the road, topping Lutheran East 31 to nothing this afternoon. Titusville over Conneaut area 56 12. Franklin beats Warren 35 nothing. Maplewood falling 24 13 to Mercer. Two games on Saturday in local high school football as well. Erie is at St. Francis, New York at 2 o'clock. Meadville is home Saturday night at 7 o'clock for Oil City. All right, still to come on Friday Night Lights, we'll hit the ice for the Otters regular season opener. Plus, we'll talk home openers next on Friday Night Lights.